Hi, my name is John Burge and I'm going to provide a verbal introduction to my composition for piano, Seven Circles, which is a seven movement suite, all based in some ways on the circle of fifths. Now, this composition was written in mostly 2021 and it really is the result of my teaching for Queen's University that year. I was teaching first year harmony, but because of COVID-19, Queen's University went entirely to remote uh, delivery of all courses. So I basically taught in my office at home and uh, through Zoom with an electric keyboard beside my piano, and we got through it. It was a learning experience for both the students and the professors, that's for sure. One of the things I do when I teach first year harmony though in person in a classroom is I love to get students involved. We actually sing progressions. It's a large class and I'll get students up to, uh, you know, play examples uh, or, or even um, uh, play, you know, a progression and I'll sort of improvise with them. It just, it just makes the class a little more enjoyable. I do that particularly when we get to the section on sequences. This is first year harmony and sequences have a nice logic to them. And it, you know, it's actually really easy to improvise through sequences if you just, just concentrate on them a little bit. I couldn't do that because of the remote delivery of courses. So, you know, I still, you know, demonstrated some things on the piano, but it wasn't the same in front of an audience. So I encourage students to actually try their own improvisations and send me a video just if they wanted to, to share their ideas. I actually played some progressions. I recorded them so that if someone wanted to sing uh, an improvis improvised line or, or play an instrument, you know, above, you know, what I, what I provided, uh, they could do that as well and record it. Uh, the progression that I generally tend to do this a lot with is the circle of fists because it's just so malleable. Uh, if you're in one key, so I'll just do it in C major. If you go all the notes with staying within C major, if you go down a fifth, then up a fourth, and that actually gives you a tritone, but then the rest are perfect fifths. And if you add chords, just, just diatonic chords. Sounds beautiful. Now you can also do it chromatically. So if you make every descent a perfect fifth, uh, then what you end up doing is you go to all 12 possible notes of the piano, all the white notes and the black notes, because you'll go C, F, but then we're going to do B flat, E flat, and it's a little farther afield uh, as you go down. You can always make them dominants. back in C major. So in my seven circles, I use the chromatic circle of fifths, which just forces the music quite far away from the tonic key. You end up getting a tritone away, and then you've got to head back home, but there's a really nice sense of logic. So what, what happened was I, I was improvising, you know, some examples for the class and I just thought, wow, you know, I've got a bunch of these that I could really turn into compositions. So I polished up seven of them and that's what we have in seven circles. Now, number one is called the uh, minimalist circle. And so it, it just has a B minor triad. I won't even play it. There's a B minor triad just going through every beat. The piece is in three, four, and melodies just move around and move far away, but we keep that B minor tonality going throughout. Uh, number two is shimmering in E, and so what you get is a very fast 30 second notes in the right hand, and then sort of a duet going underneath in the left hand with two parts. Number three is jazz-like. It's got a walking bass line and it has a swinging eight. So definitely, you know, it's, it's got a jazz flavor to it with a big climax on the dominant. It's in A minor. Number four is in D major. I sort of have a soft spot for this one because it, it might be the one I spent the most time on just because 
it, it has a process that was very malleable. It's called the linear circle. And so I've got just scales going up and down the piano, but with different rhythmic values. So the, the, the bottom line is usually one note per bar, just on the downbeat. There's a middle voice that moves, you know, sort of four notes per bar, although there's quite often a rest on the downbeat. And then the right hand usually has chords that are moving eight chords per bar, but there's often a pedal point that's being maintained while the scales move up and down. So this one uses pedal points and quite often the chords in the right hand get very far away from the chords in the left hand. So that's really what took a little bit of time to work out. Number five, you know what, what I was doing before with just triads, number five was the first one I wrote. So I you know, play a G chord, then I go to a C chord. And it really is very improvisatory. So that's the one that, you know, I, I would think students would use as a model if they were just learning the chords and they wanted to try something out. Number six is, is, is the most uh, deliberate because it's uh, canonic. The right hand starts and the left hand follows two bars later, still going through the circle of fifths. And the, the notes of the circle of fifth are very obvious uh, usually on the downbeat of each bar. Uh, it the, maintains its canon right through till the end and then we just lose it a bit so we can create a nice cadence. And uh, so number six is in uh, C and then number seven is in F. I should say the keys of all seven have a really nice sense of flow in that I start with B and then I actually go down the circle of fifths white notes so of course the last one has to be an F and rather, you know, ostentatiously, I call this grand circle. And the reason for that is, is it's the longest and it's certainly the most difficult. It takes the tonal centers of the circle of fifths and makes them into larger sections. It has a kind of, you know, almost like a, you know, a, a rondo structure, although, you know, there's really just three A's because the middle section just develops the A section, you know, as far away as you can get from it when we're, we're tritone away. But many of the sections from the opening repeat exactly or, or varied somewhat in the second half, but up a semitone. So it definitely has this, this sense of, I've heard that material before and it's coming again. Uh, part of the grand circle also is that there's really two big codas at the end of this piece and each one gets a little bit faster and it definitely works to a triumphant ending. So in a moment you can watch performances of all seven circles. Enjoy.
Thank you.